happen when you tell me the smart city that means it's the city which you can have um, every need so anything you need it can be obtained from the city so when you are talking uh, about the smart village I, I am expecting the village which have the better health centers the best in secondary school with electricity people are reading uh, 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 there is a uh, uh, the, there is a, a lot of opportunities, the employment, that I think this is smart because we are looking also on the economic aspects of the people who are living in the area. Are they, are they comfortable? Are they happy with their life? Eh? Uh, I'm happy because I'm living in the, in the city, I can get whatever I want. But what about somebody who is down there living in the, 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 the poor situation? Yes, I can say that these uh, people who are living in the village are not that poor because if they can afford it to buy the coffee for the whole year, that means they can afford it to, to have the electricity also. So I think for the village to be smart, I think we have to provide the all needs, all human being needs in the village it must be there. A smart village uh, from uh, our viewpoint should be a village that's able to use modern technologies including uh, communication technologies, uh, healthcare technologies uh, and other you know, uh, technologies that could add value to their normal life and well-being. To me a smart village would be enabled, integrated, informed and empowered to make its own decisions and to have its own structures and in some ways an ultimate expression of decentralization where they are able to be independent yet are fundamentally connected to everyone else which enables market access enables their ability to to develop their own entrepreneurial activities which fit their, their particular niche but can access the rest of the country and wherever the markets take them. When I think about uh, Rwanda, it's a country of a thousand hills and uh, I'm working particularly with uh, one village. Uh, it's called uh, Sunzu Village based in the northwest and I really view the, the work we're doing in that community as perhaps an example of what can be learned in that one community that could be spread to a thousand communities or a thousand hilltops. So um, with Rwanda only having a 15% uh, access to electricity, um, those hilltops uh, need to be need to have electricity in in order to improve um, their development. So what does it look like? Uh, it looks like something that involves a lot of partnerships between the government, between the rural population, between the um, uh, different government bodies, district, sector, cell, uh, umudugudu we call it in Rwanda. Um, and so just seeing um, a partnership between the locals, the government, uh, maybe private sector or private or small businesses, SMEs reaching out. Um, the government has a goal that to reach go from 15 to 70 percent uh, electrification by 2017. This is a very ambitious target um, but I think that um, it's doable and it's doable that people get together and uh, work together. So the majority of that, 50 percent of that access would be done through solar PV and through micro hydro. So both of those I would see in a smart village. We need a, 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 a smart village where people they can use renewable energy technologies for development but we need to integrate with uh, economic development activities with the entrepreneurs but at the same time we need to coordinate with other uh, researchers and uh, development partners to see how this grows from the grassroots level and uh, i believe costec can play a very good role on trying to coordinate this this area on information uh, gathering and support uh, on research, on innovation, on technology transfer, so that we may have uh, these uh, 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 smart villages which integrates and cuts across all areas on sustainable development. A smart village is the village when everyone has the access to electricity, when the people can, uh, can build their own businesses, they have a continuous access to the electricity. Uh, when they can use completely different, depends when the village is located, uh, different, uh, different sources. They can use the water in the mountains, they can use the wind in some open area. Um, they can use the solar panel as well, not maybe as an alternative, but as a support for some other uh, sources. So, yes, this is the access to the hospital, this is the uh, access to the school. So this is what the smart village means for me. One component is ability to access capital or ability to access 
um, access uh, technologies with a with a credit extension, um, and then it would also need to be distribution infrastructure. So a lot of the SMEs and companies in the space are still trying to establish how do they best reach these these customers that are widely dispersed. Um, uh, and you know, even with some of these larger infrastructures, with some of these mini grids, you know, the the connectivity is is um, you know hard to establish the financial requirements, and even harder, you know, with some of the, the dispersion of of customers. Um, so there's a lot of infrastructure investment um, and and um, best practice sharing that would need to be made available um, to to make a village smart or make a village able to, to access. Um, the, the infrastructure that we see as being necessary. Access to a range of energy services can really increase the quality of life in rural areas uh, to the same level or, or even better than, than the urban centres. Um, so people aren't necessarily drawn to the urban areas which are then going to have a lot of pressures um, and actually being able to kind of bypass, leap, leapfrog that uh, process and be able to actually um, people to be able to want to, to live in, in the rural areas but still have a high quality of life and uh, the access to the energy services is a vital part of that. It's, of course sustainable solution will include renewable, will include local uh, capacity, will include the possibility of operating and maintenance that system of, of that system for, uh, for the rural people. Uh, and of course it will lead at the end of the day to an increase uh, uh, economic development in uh, rural areas. The smart village I'm looking at is that in most of the countries now, even within the poor families in, in the region, there are people there who reached a certain level of education and they can be uplifted to develop skills and technical understanding enough to stay in the village and maintain those services at a very small cost or subsidized cost by the government. And if one took the current bill of investment in rural electrification and tried to translate that in supporting such communities who would not even afford the connections for that rural electrification, it may be having more, renewable energy will have probably a better impact than rural electrification. That is my personal opinion.